deals with devil worship and satanic beliefs. It contains explicit scenes and descriptions of violent crimes and rituals. Because of the program's theme and controversial subject matter, parental discretion should be exercised. You have to give a blood sacrifice to Satan. It's supposed to keep you protected. It's supposed to keep you pure. They said that if you told that the devil would come and kill our parents... It doesn't matter if you believe in Satan. It doesn't matter if you believe in demons. What's important is to know that there are people out there that do, and they're willing to do anything to accomplish their goal. Satanism is more than a hodgepodge of mysticism and fantasy, more than a Halloween motif. It's a violent impulse that preys on the emotionally vulnerable, especially teenagers, often lonely and lost. It basically started out like with the killing of animals, and there's always the heavy metal music and drugs don't help. It attracts the angry and the powerless, who often sink into secret lives. They uh, asked me if I had ever thought about killing somebody just to watch them die. And they asked me if I would like to join a satanic cult. Possessed by an obsessive fascination with sex and drugs. And yes, heavy metal rock and roll. Satan's child. Often Satanism seems to be a personal psychodrama. A kind of license for strange, sometimes violent behavior. A bloodbath would be a cleansing and a purification of a planet that has been dirtied and degraded for too long. Sometimes it's just half-baked mumbo-jumbo and scrawled symbols. But other times it goes deeper, deadly. Tommy died uh, as brutally as his mother did, but at his own hands. I left him dearly, but he also took my wife who I left. Satanism goes far beyond teenage obsession. Today there are cults that worship the devil, engage in secret ceremonies, believe in ancient, though bizarre theology. All of it constitutionally protected, as long as no laws are broken. I believe that hate is necessary in a controlled way just as much as love is necessary. The other face of adult Satanism is violent and fiendish, centered on sexual ritual and torture, frequently descending into the vilest crime of all, sexual abuse of children. He has drawn pictures of a uh, child being sacrificed. Uh, he's talked about animal sacrifices. He's disclosed molestation. And what of their own children? Some are born into satanic cults and grow up as lifelong members. Others are desperate to flee, but dread the penalty of grotesque death. They're going to catch me, it don't matter. I could run and run and run, they're always going to catch me because they're all over. And beyond the mayhem and monsters, it's said that a nationwide network of satanic criminals exists. Start with the warped and wicked Charles Manson. It's everything that human beings are, don't understand. It's all their fears. It's what they're not sure of. You dig what I'm saying? Satan to me would be God. Well, the demented son of Sam Killer, David Berkowitz. These and others, purportedly linked to the devil worship underground. Who is Satan? Who is Satan? Who is Satan? It's all over the United States and probably all over the world because it's just something that people are experimenting with now. Impossible to measure. Easy to doubt. The very mention of it invites ridicule. Come out. No. I won't let her go. No. Often the choice is to avoid confronting. Ignore it. Find other explanations. Or laugh it off. That is not the choice we have made tonight. We have chosen to ask why. Via satellite, we'll be asking the youngest person on Oklahoma's death row, just 17 when he killed in the name of Satan, why he murdered his own parents. And to Southern California, where we will ask the parents of children in the notorious McMartin Preschool why they claim their kids were satanically abused. And to London, where rock star Ozzy Osbourne will tell us why he feels he and heavy metal music are getting a bum rap. And to the state penitentiary in Angola, Louisiana, to ask convicted killer Charles Gervais why he thought the devil would award him 10,000 souls. The Investigative News Group presents the Geraldo Rivera Special. Devil Worship. Exposing Satan's Underground. Whether a Satan exists is a matter of belief. 
but we are certain that Satanism exists. To some, it's a religion. To others, it's the practice of evil in the devil's name. It exists, and it's flourishing. Members of our studio audience tonight will attest to that. They are friends and foes of Satanism, devil worshipers and law enforcers, experts and victims. They'll help us understand this force that exalts evil and darkness. We'll be asking why. Why does it exist? And why does it appeal to so many vulnerable people, especially the young? Now, the very young and the impressionable should definitely not be watching this program tonight. This is not a Halloween fable. This is a real-life horror story, and it will give small children bad dreams. As for teenagers and their parents, we hope you are watching, because it's teenagers who are most likely to fall under the spell of this jumble of dark, violent emotions called Satanism, and in some cases, to be driven into committing terrible deeds. Being into heavy metal doesn't necessarily mean your kid's also into Satanism, and most of these fans are not. But there is an undeniable connection between obsession with the really hard stuff and the occult. This stone pony from Kansas City is named Spike. The upside down cross is a symbol of Satan. Ozzy is a rock and roll team, and most acid rock is involved with Satanism. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast. A heavy metal freak from Louisiana, Joe got himself into self-mutilation in Satan's name. We cut our arms and let the blood drip into a cup and we pass it around and drink from the cup from each other's blood. Kim from Colorado also practiced the gruesome ritual. Violence with blood, we like to see blood and we used to eat blood and stuff like that. Drinking blood as entertainment is apparently a staple in the acts of heavy metalists like Wasp. My life became centered not only around the marijuana I, I was smoking and the booze I was drinking, but it became centered around Satan. Although Satanism is more obvious in the lyrics of groups like Megadeth, Slayer, Venom, and Iron Maiden, in St. Petersburg, Florida recently, Satanic symbols fill the air at this concert by Danish-born King Diamond. How much can you influence kids? I think people are too clever to be influenced by watching a band or listening to an album to go out and do the same, because if they were that easy to influence, watching the news, you get the real thing, and everybody knows that right into your living room. Personally, I am a Satanist, a practicing Satanist, but we never tried to preach that religion to anybody. Bull. An avowed Satanist, Diamond's protest that he's not preaching is belied by lyrics laced with references to death, grave, and evil. Of course, to some, it's just rock and roll rebellion. Yeah. Satan has nothing to do with this kind of a concert. It's just run out, let them have a good time. Parents, they go Satanism in their kids. It's killing their kids. It's not killing their kids. The parents are screwing up in the beginning. We're the next generation. you like it? Whatever the connection, there is no doubt that teenage satanic activity in this country is increasing dramatically. In Bayou Country in southwest Louisiana, one persistent problem has been grave robbing. So what do they take out of these? They, they take out uh, the bones, okay, uh, especially on the older uh, type grave sites as this, because our understanding is that uh, the right little finger has something to do with their culture, and uh, they make... Uh, necklace out of them and they wear them. A necklace out of the, the, right, the knuckle. right knuckle. And the graffiti is no longer John Loves Mary. Death chamber, the point of no return, this says. As you walk into the main vault, it's a devil's pentagram, 666, the sign of the devil. Over here, a bloody skull and crossbones. In Maine, a dozen churches were defaced with satanic symbols. In California, New Jersey, Alabama, and elsewhere, Police have found inverted crosses and the remains of mutilated animals. But by far the most frightening of all are the reports of teenagers killing other kids in Satan's name. 
Item Douglas County, Georgia. I'm sorry for you, young lady, and I sentence you to a uh, term of life in prison. I'm sorry for you, and I wish you good luck. <laughs> Remove her from the courtroom, Mr. Chair. 17-year-old Melissa Ernest and two other teenage members of her coven admitted drinking her 15-year-old victim's blood, then dancing around her still warm body. Now listen to this report from a small town in Maine. Yesterday's conviction of Scott Waterhouse for the murder of 12-year-old Giselle Cody may finally bring an end to talk of a satanic cult in the town. Item Long Island, New York. Police arrest 17-year-old Ricky Casso for the ritual murder of 15-year-old Gary Lowers. Casso gouged out his victim's eyes. As we've seen, the level of violence in these crimes committed in Satan's name is often appalling and savage, brutal enough to shock even hardened police officers. Detective Paul Hart thought he had seen everything. Then this veteran New Jersey officer saw how a suburban teenager murdered and mutilated his own mother. I believe that evil will once again rise and conquer the love of God. If this pact is to your approval, sign below. Just barely 14 years old, Tommy Sullivan had written this contract with the devil before he butchered his mother with his Boy Scout knife. The murder took place in the basement of the Sullivan family home. As we came down here, we found uh, Mrs. Sullivan laying on the floor just about in this area here. Uh, Describe the condition of the body. It appeared that her throat had been cut and a good portion of her face had literally been slashed away. Tommy died uh, as brutally as his mother did but at his own hands. What did Tommy then manage to do to himself? What wounds did he inflict on himself to kill himself? His first uh, self-inflicted wounds were a series of wounds to his wrists. Uh, three, if I, can re if I remember correctly, uh, deep enough to actually sever um, the arteries and, and, the, and the tendons in his arm enough to snap back his wrist. And after doing that, he literally slit his throat from ear to ear with his three and a half inch knife from the windpipe all the way back to the spinal column and to the point of almost taking his head off. Understandably unable to live with the gruesome memories in their family, Tommy's father and younger brother have moved out of state. Do you think you can ever find it in your heart to forgive your son? I don't know. I loved him dearly. But he also took my wife who I loved. How could this happen here? to a nice boy from a good Catholic school and a fine middle-class family. Sure, he was obsessed by the symbols. This is what his room looked like on the night of the murder and suicide. But heavy metal is not answer enough. You're a veteran of Vietnam. Had you ever seen anything that brutal? Certainly in, a, uh, in an area like this, in a town like this, in a neighborhood like this, you don't expect to see that type of, of violence. And uh, it was brutal. It was brutal. and. Um, uh, there's few of us that will forget that. Nor do you forget these drawings Tommy made just before he killed himself. But you continue to search for the reasons. What made Tommy? What made the others do it? As reporters investigating this story for months, we have a good idea of what's going on in this country. Our big question tonight is why. This is Detective Sergeant Paul Hart. Yes, stand up, Paul. He's the man, uh, the cop who investigated the Tommy Sullivan tragedy. I've never heard of wounds that ferocious. And the pictures are even more appalling. Pictures that we did not show here. Do you think, you're not a theologian, a theologian, you're a cop. Do you think that Tommy was possessed? I think that uh, possession is a state of mind, and it would have been a hell of an interview with Tommy had we located him. Um, certainly, like I had said before, the, his death was as, as violent as his mother's. Father Labar, you investigate these cases for the Catholic Church. Is it the Church's position that demonic possession is possible? It certainly is. There have been many cases down through the centuries many in, in our own uh, decade, for example, of where the devil has actually possessed people and caused them to do many strange things. So you believe it's possible? It's, I believe not only is it possible, it is a reality in some very select amount of cases. Let's go to, uh, to London for a, a quick in, 
exchange with Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy, I'm, I'm glad you're on the program. I'll interview you in greater detail in a couple of minutes. The one thing I have to ask you now, though, is, of course, the vast majority of your fans and the fans of heavy metal music are not Satanists. But there is no doubt, at least not in our reporting, that, sat uh, that heavy metal music plays a role. Every single kid that we, whose case we know about, who committed a violent act in Satan's name was also into heavy metal music. What's your response to that, Oz? Well, I don't really know. All I, all I do is um, make music, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't sit down and purposely plan to freak everybody out. I mean, I always have played heavy metal music. Uh, I suppose when I was younger and I started writing songs, my world was kind of dark and di dingy. You know, I, was, I came from a working class family who had nothing, no, no dough, no prospects of ever having much money. And so that's, that's how I saw the world as a child. And so well, not all my songs are about Satanism. Of course not. In fact, if you... Stand by, Ozzy, because I, I want to get to Sean Sellers, who's the youngest kid ever to go on death row in Oklahoma. Uh, Sean is a kid who murdered his mother, murdered his stepfather, murdered a convenience store clerk. What did Satanism have to do with it, Sean? What did Satan, do you feel, have to do with first your murder of that convenience store clerk? Satanism was... Well, the murder was because it was a... Um, how do I say this? So that you can understand it. It was a sacrifice to prove allegiance to Satan, to prove um, my hatred towards society and everything. Um, well, hatred towards society is one thing, Sean, but how uh, does Satan make you commit murder? Uh, yeah, but, but Geraldo, Sean, in that particular situation, uh, Sean Sellers... This is Tom Wedge, Wedge, an expert in Satanism, who is with yeah. Sean in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. Yeah, right. go ahead. Quickly. Uh, Sean, Sean had broken every one of the Ten Commandments except thou shalt not commit murder. And after he worshipped before the altar and, uh, with, uh, and asked for powers from Satan, uh, he went out to, to do this. Uh, technically, it was a human sacrifice. Okay, I gotta move on. You guys stand by. We'll get back to you. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna get into the mind of another all-American boy who came under the influence of Satanism and took part in a crime without passion or motive. He and his pals beat another classmate to death. We'll be right back. As you may have heard, we faced a much publicized dilemma in putting this program together. Many of the things about Satanism are offensive, and putting on an offensive television show was not our aim, so the most gruesome scenes have been left out. Now, what we've kept is strong. We think it's strong enough to get across an effective warning. Satanism can be cause for concern. Its roots are anywhere. Its roots are even in the very heartland of this country. Take a look. Carl Junction, Missouri a town of about 4,000 souls in the heart of the Bible Belt, where people believe in God and the devil. Periodically, satanic graffiti and some mutilated animals turn up, causing alarmists to cry that satanic cults are operating in the area. Those charges were routinely discounted until a group of students from this high school shocked the entire nation. Late one night last December, four teenagers who had been dabbling in Satanism carried baseball bats, a cat, and a length of rope to an isolated spot near their small town here in Missouri. By the time the night was over, the cat had been mutilated and one of the boys beaten to death by the other three, who then dumped his body in a well. One of the kids who did it, Pete Rowland, is now serving life sentence without parole here at this maximum security facility in Fulton, Missouri. The other two boys, his classmates, were also sentenced to life. Have you ever been in here in the first school? interview since the murder, Pete Rowland talks about the satanic elements of the crime. What was it about Satanism that attracted you? Power. Just, you know, with power comes money, comes girls, just the feeling of people looking up to you, popularity. You're a good-looking guy, smart. Wouldn't you have those things anyway? It, it just seemed easier through the devil. 
the devil was the spur for this murder which Pete confessed on this never before seen police videotape. Yes. Go ahead and show us what you did. Okay. And I got over right through here and I grabbed the older hand and I pulled him through to right here. We saw the victim there, and he was he was still moaning a little bit and going, uh, uh, like kind of like that. Right this bat here, Pete. Okay, this is the bat that I threw. This is the third bat. Quite a bit of blood and hair on this thing. You can see a lot of hair on the end of it. Who all hit him? Me, myself, and Jim Hardy, and Ron Clement. It basically started out like with the killing of animals. Then there's always the heavy metal music and drugs don't help. Sometimes I didn't feel like I was the master of my own body. Like something else kind of took over with inside of my mind. What took over? Just the violence, the devil. Lust and greed for drugs, for money. Pete gradually withdrew from family life. That is probably one of the main things I noticed. Um, he even got to where he avoided eating meals with us. He listened to the music, heavy metal music, every opportunity. Another example of the link between heavy metal and teenage satanic crime. Describe what this music did to you. It's kind of like in the way of the, when we killed animals, it was just like, it would just go, things would go through my mind and I could see the thoughts, I could see me hurting someone, you know, torturing people. And just along with the words too, some of it was just all hell Satan and ripping apart, severing flesh, gouging eyes, things like that, you know. And after you listen to this, you know, three or four hours a day, every day for, you know, years or months, and it can get to you. Why did you choose this guy as your victim? Why Steve? Just because he was a human. Just because we could deceive him easy. The boy deceived was 19-year-old Stephen Newberry, who then took the first of some 70 blows as his classmates swung their baseball bats. I, I kind of looked down and I heard a pop and I just I knew what it was. And I looked up and, and Steve's eyes were real big, you know. And he just said, you know, why me? I mean, he just looked like he was really sad, and, and one of them, someone said, because it's fun, Steve, and then we just all just, just like vultures, you know, I mean, we just went in, and just, it happened, you know. You hit him? Yes. In the head? Yes. How many times? A lot. And I look at my hands sometimes and I think, you know, are these the hands that killed him? And I mean, I know they are, but it just doesn't seem like it, you know? I, I don't want you know, I would never want to kill anybody again. I mean, I, right after we did what we did, I just, I felt real empty inside. I felt like I could never love again, you know? I felt like a zombie. The devil double-crossed you? Yes. It just leads to your own destruction. How do you know that now? Look where I'm at, you know, look at my sentence. I mean, I'm in, I'm in jail with life without parole. I feel very guilty that I didn't pay attention, that, that I didn't. There were some things that I saw that I sh feel like I should have paid attention to. I saw the album covers and they're hideous. I just assumed that if they sell it, it's got to be okay. Uh, I saw satanic symbols on his book work and I had spoken to him about it, didn't mean anything, you know, it was, I assumed it was a passing phase. I had my things when I was that age. I assumed that he had his, I assumed wrong. And I would advise anybody, if they see anything like that, to look into it, don't ignore it. It doesn't pass. It's just something I'll never get over, ever. Parents, heed the advice of Pete Rowland's mom. Pay attention. Satanism is not a harmless fad or a passing phase in some of these kids' lives. Ozzy, yeah? I know that your lyrics are less excessive than groups like uh, Slayer or Venom or uh, Iron Maiden or some of the others, but still, for some reason, maybe it's because you've been around for so long, I see tattoos of your name on some of these, uh, you know, teenage devil worshippers' arms. Wherever I see devil graffiti and satanic graffiti, I see your name also. 
Do you feel a sense of responsibility, Oz? The only responsibility I feel is, is the fact that I, I just, I'm, a, I'm a true musician in um, what I play. I don't, I don't want to make anybody start doing all this devil worship crap, because that's not my intention, although I have sung on a few songs about the devil. You know, that's about it, you know. I, I don't want anyone to harm themselves. What that's about the intention. issue of responsibility? What about the whole thing about guilt? Do you feel responsible? I don't, I don't, feel, I don't feel guilty. I feel um, kind of persecuted by everybody because I'm not a bad guy. I'm, I'm, it, n my intentions are not to harm anyone. In fact, it's, dead, it's directly the opposite. Like when people come to my concerts, I want them to have a good, fun evening out, you know. And it's, it's, it seems to me that a lot of people judge the book by the cover more. more. So they, they write things about me where they don't even know that I talk, what they're talking about, you know. Well, there are lots of people out there, lots of people here in our studio audience who have a very different point of view. We'll get to them coming up next. A look into the dark soul of Satanism. Stay with us. Satan means whatever I'm looking at, whatever I want it to mean. It's on my forehead. It's, it, it's, me on, it's me if I can get up on that highway. It's me, it's me trying to save my air, my water, my trees, my wildlife. It's me on that cameraman. The Geraldo Rivera special, Devil Worship, will continue. Once again, a warning about some tough language and descriptions in a report that we'll have for you in just a moment. Let me introduce you first, though, to Zena LaVey. Her father, Anton LaVey, is, uh, I guess, the founding father of Satanism in this country. Uh, he founded it what, about 25 years ago, Zena? Yeah, approximately 25 years ago. Can you tell us with any certainty how widespread the religion of Satanism is in this country or around the world? Well, the religion is worldwide. Um, we have members just throughout the world, and it's a legitimate religion. Um, it's, um, you know, perfectly within uh, the... <laughs> it's legal. <laughs> but how many people? Hundreds, oh, thousands, tens thousands. of thousands, hundreds of thousands? Hundreds of thousands, I can't say. Thousands, easily. What is it? Dr. Aquino. Dr. Aquino, the high priest of the Church of Set. Temple of Set. Temple of Set, also a colonel, interestingly enough, in the United States Army. What is it, this Satanism? I think that um, uh, there is some confusion tonight because this same term means something different to Satanists than it does to Christians in the United States. By our own standards, the people who you've shown in these film clips would not be Satanists, either present or in the past. Rather, they would be the failures of a conventional religion. I appreciate your opinion. What is it, sir, then? What is Satanism? Well, originally the Church of Satan, when it was founded, was composed not of people with a hatred for Christianity, but of people who, by and large, were agnostics and atheists, because they felt that the institutions which had arisen around Christianity had failed in their moral commitment. So Satanism itself became an emphasis on rational self-interest and on taking responsibility for your own intellectual and ethical decisions. Rational self-interest, you call it? Yes. Okay, one thing we do know that Satanism has in common with other religions is the belief that the devil can inhabit your body. Remember the movie Exorcist, the film? It dealt with ridding the body of Satan in a ritual called exorcism. As we discovered in the heart of the Haitian section of Brooklyn, New York, exorcism is more than just a scene in a movie. It's a common aspect of some people's religious beliefs. Operating out of the back room of this religious curio shop, a voodoo priest regularly performs exorcism. Exorcism. This one on a woman whose persistent stomach pains were thought to be caused by the devil inside her. I know you've been possessed by the devil for so many years. He's been bothering you. That's today you come to me, and I'm going to let him know he cannot bother you again. With the help of several assistants, 
and accompanied by throbbing traditional music. The priest's incantations built to a crescendo. Then, in a moment of almost sexual release, the devil was purged from the patient. The chicken is dead. The chicken take all the malady, all the sickness away from you. In every way, Southern California is a very long way from the heart of Brooklyn. But at the church of a preacher named Roy Masters, exorcisms of the devil appear just as sincere, far out, and dramatic. With a background in show business rather than theology, Masters claims the members of his congregation react so profoundly to the laying on of the cross because they feel and fear themselves possessed by the devil. Come out. No. I won't let her go. No. Devil worship is as old as religion itself. It's the grim alternative, the flip side of life. Evil over good, dark over light, Satan over God himself. Come forth and bestow these blessings of hell upon us. Forced underground by the religious hysteria of the Middle Ages, Satanism was resurrected, first by an Englishman named Alistair Crowley in the early 20th century. It entered its modern era in this country just about 25 years ago, under the theatrical guidance of Anton LaVey, California-based high priest of present-day devil worship. LaVey founded the Church of Satan. Now, despite its preachings of evil and hate, the Church and its offshoots are constitutionally protected religions. I believe that hate is necessary in a controlled way just as much as love is necessary. LaVey penned the best-selling Satanic Bible, it's the handbook of devil worshippers everywhere. And for a time, he was considered chic enough to attract the attention of Hollywood. After working together on a film, LaVey made Sammy Davis Jr. an honorary member, while the late Jane Mansfield was for a time among LaVey's most passionate followers. Most of the people that are in my group are professional people. They're business people. They're people that are from very responsible walks of life. Contemporary Satanism relies heavily on bizarre and sometimes bloody ceremonies. One of the ugliest, yet apparently most common rituals in devil worship is the sacrifice of animals, often involving the removal of organs and the draining of their blood in elaborate ceremonies. Well, a series of cattle mutilations on this Louisiana farm has sent the shiver of fear through this entire community. Show me the evidence that this was some kind of ritual. Oh, this hole right here? And the tail, they cut the tail off. The same thing with the ears. They cut the ears off. Right. So you two have no doubt but that your animals were used in some kind of ritual. Right. Yes. All yeah. the blood was gone out of them, too. Every one of them, the blood was drained. No blood, no insides. Eyes pulled out, everything. I'm begging for something to be done. I'm scared. In response to the animal mutilations and other mysterious and unsolved crimes in this area, the local fundamentalist church held an extraordinary service. There's been a lot of questions about are there any witchcraft, occultism, Satan worshippers in the area? And the answer is obviously yes. The only way to deal with Satan, which is spirit, is by way of spirit. The preacher asked his flock to protect themselves with their faith, but some chose a more down-to-earth method. Brother Blunt, I believe in the Lord. And I believe in you, but I'm still going to carry my gun because I'm scared. In our investigation, we discovered that some of Satan's soldiers are also high-ranking officers in the United States military. Here at San Francisco's Presidio Army Base, for example, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino led a double life as a satanic high priest. The colonel's cult is listed in the San Francisco telephone book, and his phone answering machine boasts of his affiliation. This is the Temple of Set. The temple is the only international satanic religious institution fully recognized by the United States government. Indeed, the army does officially recognize Satanism as a legitimate religion and supplies chaplains with this guide for ministering to the satanic soldier. Yet unofficially, some charge that army bases have become sanctuaries for devil worshippers. Just last month, under a full moon, I took a midnight tour of the Presidio grounds with police investigator Ed Abanovsky. Are you saying that there was a satanic cult active right here on the army base? Yes. We believe so. There's evidence to substantiate that. 
they had uh, satanic rituals going on. There was an altar in there, and all of the graffiti on the wall would indicate that. Let's see if I can see it. How'd you find this place? This is a uh, fortification during World War II. During World War II, where they had uh, gun batteries. I can see a pentagram painted on the wall. I can see the words Prince of Darkness. On this wall, I see several inverted crosses and other obvious uh, satanic ritualistic paintings or symbols. Joseph, we've agreed to conceal your identity, but you are an officer in the United States Army. That's correct. And you were an officer in the United States Army during the time you were a member of this satanic organization. Yes. Did the authorities at the Presidio know that a satanic organization was active on their base during the time that you were a member? They were very much aware of it, yes. The present base commander, Colonel Rafferty, says that today at least... I know of no satanic activities whatsoever in this area. Satanism may be a constitutionally protected religion, but similar to another recent case at the United States Military Academy at West Point. Here, charges surface connecting ritual child abuse at the Presidio Daycare Center to the devil cult. It was here, parents and others allege, that as many as 60 young children were ritualistically abused by soldiers of Satan. What actually was done to the kids? Uh, oral copulation, sodomy, uh, defecation, uh, they were urinated on. The former chief juvenile investigator at the Presidio, Ed Abenofsky, is here. He's now a deputy sheriff in Sarah, Santa Clara County. Colonel Aquino, we note, sir, for the record, that you were originally implicated in the dreadful charges of child abuse. We note also that no charges were ever brought against you and presumably you have been cleared. Would you like to comment on why those charges were brought against you? Well, the entire time that uh, the so-called child molestation scandal was occurring at the Presidio, the time period when um, uh, these terrible events were supposedly taking place, I was assigned to the National Defense University in Washington, D.C., and my wife was out there living with me. But is it not a fact that a three-and-a-half-year-old girl identified you as the alleged perpetrator of molestation? No. As uh, a matter of fact, it is not the case. An accusation was made by her stepfather, who was an army chaplain, speaking on behalf of this child. In her original interview with the FBI, she denied ever being molested. Well, I've seen the... I, I, you are innocent until proven guilty you were never charged in this case i don't want to belabor the point i have seen however the affidavits for the search warrant of your home and they indicate the child is speaking to the authorities not her father this was after she had been subjected to uh, therapy let's say you are innocent of that you are no longer at the presidio you are now in st louis but you are still a serving officer a colonel in the united states army do you feel it is inconsistent with a high-ranking officer pledged sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States that you are also a practicing Satanist? Not in the least. The Army has known of my religion for the last 20 years. There has never been a problem with it, any more than there is a problem with other members of minority religions. But let me read from the Satanic Bible. Quote, one of, this is the, the number one, uh, uh, I guess, uh, commandment. Death to the weakling, wealth to the strong. How can you believe this and still uphold the Constitution of the United States? Death to the weakling? Well, for one thing, what you're looking at there is a highly polemical book that was never meant to be taken literally in Written all of its commandments. Father. Yes, and I'm aware of that, and I'm also saying that members of the Church of Satan understood that much of this book was in the form of a polemic. It was a statement uh, that was dramatically made, but was not intended to be taken literally in all its respects. So we should not take this book literally? Correct. This is Dr. Walter Grote, would you stand, sir? whose daughter was allegedly abused at West Point, the United States Military Academy. You were a captain in the United States Army, aside from what allegedly happened to your daughter, which you, I know you allege was part of a satanic cult, and having nothing to do with this man, I state again, for the record. What is your feeling, sir, on the fact that a serving officer in the United States Army is also a professed Satanist, a high-ranking person? Well, I think uh, in this election year, we've heard a lot about values, Geraldo. Um, we've heard a lot that our little children, our little children, should be saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Uh, Mr. Aquino has identified himself as an antichrist. He preaches that as the leader of the Temple said. I don't think I'm misquoting him. I find it inconceivable that we can have 
candidates talking about one nation under God and having our children say that, yet by the same token, we can have somebody in our army as a colonel leading our troops in battle who are opposed to the very concept of God and whose whole purpose it is, is to fight against God. We have to take a break right here. Next, more on the connection between Satanism and violence, including more charges of the sexual abuse of children. If you have let your kids watch up until now, we urge you, ladies and gentlemen, we are not kidding. Get them away from the TV during our next report. We'll be right back. Once again, parents, we urge you to heed our strongest warning about this next report on the abuse of children, the alleged abuse of children, because if the point of devil worship is evil, what could be more evil than this? That's the baby right there. Right here? Uh-huh. It came out of her already. What'd then, they do to the baby? Then David took it and kept throwing it against the wall, and, it, and he killed it, and he took it in the house. No, you saw that? Yeah. These are pictures that can chill a parent's soul. They're a symptom that something dreadful, unspeakable has happened to the child. In this case, it's an eight-year-old boy from Grenada, Mississippi. They took us in an old caboose. And they had these things they called spanes. Spanes? Yes, yeah, spanes. They stuck it up my butt. Who Was stuck it? David. Your dad? Uh-huh. Ow, did it hurt. Two doctors have provided medical evidence that from a very early age, this boy has been repeatedly abused. His mother goes further. She claims the sexual abuse happened as part of a satanic ritual. Do you allege your husband was part of a satanic cult? I allege that he was the high priest of a satanic cult. David, the boy's father, has never been formally charged. He's now in hiding. Now, incest is certainly not new, but apparently more and more of it is taking on the dark overtones of Satan. She talked about there being a Satan, and she said she talked about there being boys that had hurt her. Listen to what this five-year-old girl from Orange County, California, told her mother her father did to her. Daddy um, was heading the meeting, and he wore a real-life baby foot around his neck. She says they each drank the blood, and then they all hurt me. Said, how did they hurt you? She spread her legs and pointed to their crotch and says, right here. And it gets worse. According to his family, this severely traumatized 10-year-old boy, also from Southern California, was allegedly molested by a trusted neighborhood minister as part of an ongoing satanic cult. Jimmy talks about having a gun held to his head, about being shown a skeleton, about having to touch the skeleton. He has drawn pictures of a uh, child being sacrificed. Uh, he's talked about animal sacrifices. He's disclosed molestation in the very places created to care for children in nurseries and daycare centers across the nation there are increasing reports of ritual sexual abuse the children of mcmartin are still filled with lurid stories of their awful experience there what did they say the devil would do to you they said that if we told that the devil would come and kill our parents and he said that we wouldn't Live to be the age nine. What were they doing to you? Molesting me. What does um, that mean? What does molesting you mean? Touching us in places we don't want. And then they would, like, threaten us, like, oh, you don't say a word else. We're going to come to your house and kill everybody except for you. And we're going to send you to the devil and everything. And they would scare us really much. No region in this country is beyond the reach of the devil worshippers. Even here in the heartland of America. Stories of ritual abuse crop up. The children you're about to meet were born into it. They say their parents forced them to witness bloody rituals, and even they say to participate in ritual murder. Now in the safe haven of a concerned foster family, the children are haunted by their personal nightmares. My dad was involved in a lot of it. Okay, he's like one of the main guys. He's a leader or something. He made us have sex with him and with other guys, and he's done it with other people. Um, I don't know. I just don't like him. Tell us what else besides having sex with him and the other guys that made you do. Kill 
kill kids and be there and involved in everything else that happened. And I had to be there. And if I didn't, he threatened, you know, like, you're going to be killed or people aren't going to believe you if you tell anybody. Um, or I'll find you, you know. So he said, there's no way out and you must do it. We found out she had been defecated on, that it was smeared all over her body and put in her mouth. My children have talked about all of those things and worse. They've talked about having to kill other children. Well, she told me about the time um, from as, as we think was about a year and a half, year and a half, two years old, when um, this was the satanic cult that she was involved with. And um, she was made to take a gun and put it up to someone's head. It was another child and pull the trigger. One of the greatest difficulties in reporting a story like this one is that so much of it sounds so outrageous, too dreadful, too bizarre to be true. Well, here in Nebraska and elsewhere across this nation, concerned citizens have gotten together to defeat that disbelief. This organization is called Believe the Children. Its guiding principle, that the stories these young victims are telling are too widespread, too consistent not to be true. The stories are so outrageous, and I am such an honest person, I assumed everybody would believe me. And to this day, I'll get in the middle of a story and I'll think, they're going to think I'm crazy. This sounds crazy. But when you begin to hear this same thing time and again, different stories but the same, the same horrible underlying things, the same behaviors in the kids, I just want to scream. I'm a stranger. I come up to you and you tell me this story and I say, I don't believe you. How do you react? What do you do? I just say, well, that's your right not to believe it but someday if you see something or you hear something from somebody else just remember what you heard from me if we were lying i don't think we would come up with such good lies are you telling us the truth if this isn't true i mean you can do anything you want with me but it's true so sad let's go now to the mcmartin preschool parents who have gathered for us in Los Angeles. You recall that case, notorious case. I must state for the record, however, that the charges against most of the defendants have been dropped. Charges are still pending against two of them, however. We know that the parents and the children allege child abuse. What is much less known is that they say it was ritual abuse as part of a satanic cult. Whoever is the designated spokesman there, please tell us why you believe this was part of a ritual cult, uh, abuse as part of a satanic cult? Well, the easiest reason to that question, Geraldo, is the fact when the children started talking, they started talking about robes and candles. They described an Episcopal church. And once they started narrowing that down, you could see that it had to be satanic. It's very important in satanic religions to have a priest because they truly do believe in power. The difference only between Catholicism and the Episcopal religion uh, is almost done. They both use wine, they both use bread, and so on. The truth about Satanism is they truly do use blood, and they mix it with urine, and then they also use the real meat, the real flesh. This is what makes Satanism true, and this is what 1,200 molested kids in the city of Manhattan Beach have told the Sheriff's Department, and it's an outrage that we are where we are with this case, and these poor, unprotected kids that have, uh, that's a third of the school system in the city of Manhattan Beach has been molested. We have eight preschools closed here. This is the child molestation capital of the world. We have more preschools closed in this city than any city this side of Detroit, and I'm not picking on Detroit. Right. You may have heard of uh, a case here in New York recently where last year actually uh, a little six-year-old girl called Lisa Steinberg was murdered allegedly by her own step parents. Well, that trial for the murder of that little girl opened here in New York today. There were some shocking developments. The defense attorney stated that in some way the parents, or at least one of them, was a member of a satanic cult. That just today here in New York. We're joined now by Maury Terry, author of The Ultimate Evil. He has been studying this and other satanic cases. Why do you believe the satanic cult had something to do with this case of Lisa Steinberg? Well, in the first case, uh, instance, Geraldo, uh, the police removed demonology books from the Steinberg and Nussbaum apartment in New York. In the second place, I have seen writings done by Hedda Nussbaum, the adopted mother of Lisa, if you will, in which she admitted that she was involved with a cult on Long Island that practiced rituals and conducted uh, pornography, uh, pornography and were involved in, in child pornography. What's this here is uh, Hedda's 
diary. This is her own diary? This had his appointment book diary from 1983. You can expect and to be subpoenaed after this, sir. Yes. And in it, you can see here that Hedda was calling deprogrammers, cult deprogrammers, back in the fall of 1983 in order to try to get herself out of this group in Long Island that she had gotten involved with. You have a sketch drawn by Lisa? Uh, we found in the Steinberg apartment a sketch drawn by Lisa in her own hand. Her Look own at it, ladies and gentlemen. That's drawn by Lisa Steinberg with the satanic pentagram on it and with the descending crescent moon above it. Uh, this, I was told, confirmed by a principal involved in the case that this was the costume that Lisa wore at the rituals on Long Island and that the costume scared her. I was also told by a principal involved in the case that they put makeup on Lisa in order to make her look more like an adult and she hated wearing the makeup. The prosecution is trying to present this case as a simple homicide. What I'm saying to you here now is that there is a lot more evidence in this case. The case goes much deeper than is being portrayed as going, and this evidence that we're revealing here tonight should certainly graphically uh, illustrate that fact. We'll be right back, folks. Berkowitz, Lucas, Ramirez, and Manson are the all-stars in the halls of infamy. But the vast majority of these ritual murders are not the work of the celebrated psychopaths. There are literally hundreds of cases most of us have never heard of. The Geraldo Rivera special, Devil Worship, will continue. Reminder, this program deals with devil worship and satanic beliefs. It contains explicit scenes and descriptions of violent crimes and rituals. Because of the program's theme and controversial subject matter, parental discretion should be exercised. The Geraldo Rivera Special. Devil Worship. Exposing Satan's Underground continues. Welcome back. The subject is Satanism, and I've been asked repeatedly where the idea to do it came from. Well, it goes back to someone that I interviewed for our special last spring on murder and the frightening fascination verging on adoration that so many people felt for this person. A murderer who would have us believe that he is the incarnation of the devil. Here's Charles Manson. Okay, I, mill I, I kill everybody since day one. I murdered them all. I'm God and I've killed everybody. Or the you? devil. Or the devil, yeah, you could use the word devil or demons or whatever you want to call it. Mostly the devil in your world. Isn't well, okay, I'll play, I'll play. There's no, there's no game I can't play. There's you no game you, I haven't played. You are the devil. Yes. Okay, I'll be the devil then. Along with Hitler, cult leader Charles Manson is today's top satanic celebrity. Yeah, I, uh, I, I chopped up nine hogs and I'm going to chop up some more, you <laughs> I'm going to kill you as many as I can. I'm going to pile you up to the sky. Responsible for at least nine ritual murders, Manson is revered by many modern-day devil worshippers who have adopted his philosophy of the mass extermination of those they consider unfit to live. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. Nicholas Schreck visited Charlie at San Quentin, keeps a picture of his hero on his apartment wall, and displays a lock of Manson's hair as if it were a sacred relic. A bloodbath would be a cleansing and a purification of a planet that has been dirtied and degraded for too long. David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, was also a Satanist, the serial killer who terrorized New York while murdering five young women and seriously wounding at least six others. Berkowitz was deeply involved in bizarre rituals. So was Henry Lee Lucas, who told police he murdered his girlfriend, his mother, and others across the country all for a satanic cult. Why do they want to kill people? They're supposed to be for the reincarnation of the devil. And when a series of ritualistic rapes and murders hit Southern California, it should have come as no surprise that Richard Ramirez, the alleged night stalker, worshiped the devil. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail a belief system that exalts sadistic murder, torture, ritualistic suicide, and racial purity. This has historically been a sacred day, a day of purification, a day of hell and fury. We mourn not its victims, we honor its victors. In closing, 
I would remind those here that murder is the predator's prerogative, and there is no bird without blood. Berkowitz, Lucas, Ramirez, and Manson are the all-stars in the halls of infamy. But the vast majority of these ritual murders are not the work of the celebrated psychopaths. There are literally hundreds of cases most of us have never heard of. Like this satanic murder in Denver, Colorado, where the victim was handcuffed, chained, and slaughtered. Authorities claim that before he died, the victim participated in drinking his own blood. Or this diabolical example in the city by the bay. Here in a rundown San Francisco neighborhood far from the tourist attractions and the Golden Gate Bridge, a satanic cult committed crimes of incredible brutality. This is the story of that cult and of its leader, a devil-worshipping murderer named Clifford St. Joseph. The body was tucked underneath the front wheels on the curb side, wrapped in yellow blankets and tied with uh, guitar string. What was the condition of the body when you found it? It uh, had a number of unusual wounds on it. Uh, one of the most unusual things was a design carved into the chest of the individual. And once we examined it more closely, it was an upside-down pentagram. The Devil's Pentagram, the inverted five-pointed star found on the unidentified corpse of St. Joseph's victim, is apparently the principal signature of Satanists. Like a recurring nightmare, it shows up at crime scenes and in their graffiti everywhere. At St. Joseph's apartment, where this grisly murder was committed, I talked to Ed, a fringe member of the cult and the state star witness. What was going on in this apartment? They uh, asked me if I had ever thought about killing somebody just to watch him die. And they asked me if I would like to join a satanic cult. Ritual crime was apparently a regular occurrence at this apartment. In this case of torture and murder, the victim has never been identified. For purposes of this case, he was called John Doe number 60. The first cut would be to the lips that sealed the person's mouth for all eternity. They also poured wax, I guess, in the eyes, and that sealed their eyes for all eternity. They did much more to John Doe number 60, but we'll spare you the details. Caught and convicted of murder, kidnapping, and ritual abuse, St. Joseph and another cult member are currently serving long prison sentences. Ed remains free, although he claims only to have been a reluctant participant in the murder of John Doe 60. He does admit bringing a teenager here to be chained up and ritualistically abused. How can you say you have no guilt when you bring a 17-year-old kid in here, you help shackle him to a radiator, and then participate in his torture and sexual abuse? Well, I never participated in torture, and no torture was allowed of him. You were having sex with a kid who's chained up. What are you talking about? Well, Ricky, first of all, likes that type of sex. What was going on here is a, a nightmare. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a nightmare. Are there devil worshippers, are there murderers involved in this particular case still at large? In this particular case, yes. We do know of, of we have one person identified, one man, other man identified, who was present during this particular homicide. Do you think that this ritualistic stuff is spreading? It's all over the United States and probably all over the world because it's just something that people are experimenting with now. Oh. Satan means whatever I'm looking at, whatever I want it to mean. It's on my forehead. It's with me on it's me if I can get up on that highway. It's everything that human beings are, don't understand. It's all their fears, it's what they're not sure of. You dig what I'm saying? Satan to me would be God. That man is so repugnant. All of these satanic murderers are. The acts that they have been convicted of committing are so horrible that the question could fairly be raised again why are we doing this broadcast we are doing it ladies and gentlemen because it's our feeling that these cases are too often overlooked too often underreported we think that there is a widespread problem here that you deserve that you need to know about joining us right now via satellite we have another convicted satanic murderer his name is Charles Gervais he is currently serving a life sentence in Angola Penitentiary in Louisiana. Mr. Gervais, why, in Satan's name, did you hammer and strangle to death an innocent person? Did you really think, sir, that they were going to give you 10,000 souls, this devil? Um, well, Raldo, I can't talk about my case. 
Get to the point about Satanism, Charlie. Okay. It's, there's a lot of confusion in it, and it's mostly people that really don't understand. Listen, what about this 10,000 souls, Buster? That's what I want to know about. Well, that's what I've got into Satanism for. Why? Why? Because it possessed power. Where were you going to get this power? Where were you going to use this power? In hell. In hell. You were going to kill a person on earth to get the power of 10,000 souls in hell? Are you sick? Nope. Why aren't you condemned to die? Why aren't I? Yeah. Did you hmm. use Satanism as a defense? Yes. Ted Gunderson. FBI veteran. Former head of the regional office in Los Angeles. Is there a network of these satanic murderers in this country, do you allege? I cannot say that there's a network of satanic murderers. I can say that based on information furnished to me by confidential sources and informants, based on interviews with dozens of uh, uh, survivors from the satanic uh, operations uh, through the years, satanic beliefs, etc., I can say that there is a network of these people across the country who are very active. Uh, they have their own rest and relaxation farm. Uh, they are in contact with each other. It ties in loosely to the drug operation. Uh, ties into motorcycle gangs. And it goes on and on. They have their own uh, people who are specialized in surveillances and photography uh, and in assassinations. After this commercial break, we're going to have the anatomy of a satanic crime, showing you why law enforcement has had such a difficult time coming to grips with the strange, shadowy world of satanic crime. Stay with us. One reason we think you haven't heard more about them is that many satanic crimes are simply not recognized as such. Take a look at this report, please. These ritualistic crimes are everywhere, and yet in most communities they are either overlooked or underreported. There's an example going on right now here in Kansas City that tells us why. In this house, in a quiet residential neighborhood, a series of brutally violent, horrible crimes have been committed, and yet the police and prosecutor in this town seem either unable or unwilling to draw the obvious connection between what happened here and Satanism. All I know is uh, the whole thing was evil. This 22-year-old, call him Jay, escaped from the House of Horrors wearing only a dog collar. For four days, he had been ritualistically tortured by a man named Bob Berdella. He uh, took the, the transformer and hooked it to my genitals and stepped back and took pictures while I'm flopping around. What a sick dog. It seemed to never end, you know. After Jay escaped through a window, by burning the ropes that bound him to the bed, the police arrested Berdella. When they searched his home, they found over 250 photographs of young men, including Jay, in the process of being tortured, in some cases fatally. Hidden in the walls of the home, they also found a human skull. He had pictures of guys that he had did did things to kids tied up and with marks on them and things apparently Berdella would pick up young men usually hustlers like joe many of them runaways who cluster in kansas city strip i need 25 dollars for a small amount of money these kids go anywhere to do anything with anyone unfortunately some went home with Berdella, whose involvement with devil worship was easily apparent there was, for example, a satanic symbol on the outside wall of his house. His business card seemed straight from hell, and he ran this macabre shop of horrors, possibly stocking it with his own unique hobby. By agreement with the district attorney, Berdella was allowed to plead to one count of murder. He received a life sentence, but many people in this community are outraged that the investigation went no further. Did you pursue, did the police pursue, these allegations of satanic involvement? The police department, uh, it's my understanding, called in some people who knew about witchcraft to talk to them about that. That particular aspect of the case basically went nowhere. County legislator Carol Cole disagrees. 
Why do you think there is no attention being paid to that ritual aspect of this case? You're in the heart of America, the Bible Belt. And we hate to think that people like that live next door to us. We're turning our backs on acting like it doesn't happen. We're putting our hands over our eyes as if it didn't occur here, that it was just a murder. This is Detective Lee Orr of the neighboring Kansas City, Kansas Police Department. Do you believe there is a satanic aspect to these horrible crimes? Yes, I'm sure there is, yes. Uh, we've also had contact with people that have come out of the occult, Satan worship, who have definitely made statements and uh, who I've interviewed uh, that state that uh, Mr. Rodella was involved uh, at a higher level than most in the occult. If these allegations exist, as we merit to you that they do, isn't it reasonable that if you pursued them with vigor, you might find evidence that could pin more of these crimes on this man that might help solve some of the cases of missing children and missing young adults that you have in this and surrounding communities? There isn't any question that if there are people who have information about him being involved in witchcraft or Satanism, and that information has not been given to us, that we would love to have it because it would be further leads that we could follow. Here perhaps are some leads for investigators to follow. Item. Police reports obtained by us show local authorities have long been aware that devil worshippers were conducting large-scale ceremonies in the Kansas City area. Item. This young man says he was an eyewitness to a sexual orgy at Burdella's house, one with heavy satanic overtones. And item, this woman claims she met Burdella through her former husband, a high priest in a local satanic cult. We were at a meeting in the area, and he was up on the platform in a throne, which symbolizes that that sacrifice at that particular meeting was for him, was done for him. So he was in an exalted position. He was a VIP. Yes, he was. What happened there at that ceremony? There was a young man killed, a young boy. He was 16 years old. Did you ever tell the police about any of this? No, I didn't. Why? People don't believe you when you talk about these things. People just do not believe these things happen. Remember, aside from the torture and sodomy of Jay who escaped, Burdella has pled guilty to just one murder a runaway whose skull was found inside his house. A second murder charge is pending. Yet police sources tell us Burdella is suspected in at least seven homicides. When they excavated his backyard, they found remains of three people. Paul Howell believes his missing 19-year-old son was among them. They found a head right up here, I believe. A skull? A skull right up in this area somewhere. It is one thing for law enforcement to be uninformed. It's quite another, though, for them to refuse to follow known leads. Paul Howell alleges they did exactly that with the information he provided from his own investigation. For three years, he says, he begged them to investigate Burdella's suspected connection with his boy's disappearance. I dug through his trash and found different things. At one time, I thought it was dog remains. Later on, after the investigation, the police come in. Three years later, I found out that this is the way they said Bob disposed of some of the waste of the human remains. He put them in dog food bags and set them out in the trash. What yeah. must it be like to a father to think that his own son was disposed of in pieces in someone's garbage? It's just uh, very upsetting, actually, and want to get even. You want to find everybody that's involved beside Bob and hope that it don't happen to anybody else's kids. It apparently also happened to Harriet's kid, Bonnie's husband James, who disappeared in 1985. When James first disappeared, even, we, we begged him to do something to go in Berdella's house to get a search warrant for any reason to try to find my son in there because it had been told to us that he was possibly chained up in the house in there. Photographs of James' tortured, apparently murdered body were among those seized by police. Will you charge Berdella with the murder of James Ferris? That is not something that I can tell you yes or no. Will you charge Berdella with the murder of Jerry Howell? And again, I can't tell you whether or not there will be charges brought against Mr. Berdella or anybody else for the murder of Mr. Howell. Is it possible that by narrowing the focus of the investigation, people who are involved in these awful acts are still free?
Yes, there's no question about it. You cannot subdue individuals and photograph them and you're in the photos by yourself. So there is a great implication that somebody else that participated in this is still at loose and they're at large in the city. And you're going to be reading about it again in another 12 or 16 months. I hope she's not right, but stand up. This is Detective Sergeant Lee Orr from the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department. You saw him in the video piece. This is retired Detective Michael McKee of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Gentlemen, the Kansas City Star is reporting as late as yesterday that the district attorney in your community is still insisting that the Burdella case of serial murders or alleged serial murders is not related to Satanism, is not a ritual crime. You were one of the first cops on the scene. Do you believe that this case is satanic, satanically related? It's my opinion that it is. We recovered a ceremonial robe from the bedroom when we excavated the backyard and dug up the skull in the backyard. It was buried with a jar of feathers and had some burnt wood with it. We also recovered numerous books on the occult from the residence of Mr. Burdella. Now, whether these cases are not being treated as ritual crimes because of embarrassment to the community or because it's easier for cops just to prosecute them as, as simple homicides, we don't know. Coming up next, we have talked in this program so far, and you have heard the words about child abuse. A woman by the name of Cheryl Horton and others tell an even more grotesque story, ladies and gentlemen. Having babies to be turned over for human sacrifice to Satan. And we'll deal with that when we come back. I think sometimes that, uh, ironically, on television, when you give a disclaimer, it has exact, exactly the opposite to the intended effect, and more people tune in than tune out. I'm going to say this as straight as I possibly can. I am begging you, if you're a parent and you've got kids there, that this subject is just too upsetting for your young children. Please get them out of the room or change the station. We urge you to exercise parental discretion. It has been established, as you have already seen on this program, in courts of law now, that human sacrifice is sometimes an element in rituals performed by people calling themselves Satanists. There is no longer any doubt about that, though just how often it actually is done is obviously impossible to know. The ideal sacrifice, we are told, apparently requires babies. And there are those people in satanic sex, including mothers who have belonged, who tell of babies being bred for sacrifice. Take a look, please. Read what they do, Guy. They use blood in their rituals, and the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. In the classic horror film, Rosemary's Baby, Mia Farrow is drawn into the clutches of a satanic cult and is married to the devil. This is no dream. This is really happening. She conceives the Antichrist, providing the group with a living symbol of Satan. To be worshipped and adored. God is dead! Satan lives! Satan lives! As sickening and unbelievable as it sounds, bearing children for use in satanic rituals may really be happening. My daughter, who I named Wendy, was sacrificed at birth with an upside down cross and then taken outside and buried. Um, my son, they kept and let live till two years old and then he was sacrificed. Michael and I had a son. And he was dedicated to Satan at birth. And at six months of age, he was sacrificed to Satan. It is most common for the heart to be taken from the child and offered to Satan. These women say they speak from personal experience. They claim to be breeders, forced by covens to bear children, both as a way for the cults to get new members and to find fresh victims for ritual murder. Did you give birth to infants who were sacrificed? To my first two. Were sacrificed? Were sacrificed. I was told it was the highest honor I could mm -hmm. ever do as a woman, was to sacrifice my first two. And you did that? I was so brainwashed, I believed the, their philosophy. Jackie tells us she was able to escape her satanic cult. Today, she helps other women, like Donna, who are trying to break free. You killed your babies? 
Um. Take the skin off. You skin the baby? You take the baby's skin off? Do you feel remorse? Have you told the police? I had to do what I had to do, or I'd be killed like like the babies that, that, they, that they made me watch killed and that they put in my hand. They said, obey, or this is you. Jackie, you have some pictures drawn during the therapy sessions by the people who've been through this. Why don't you show me some of them? This picture is a person remembering skinning uh, children and babies and hanging it out to dry. And children skinning. skinning them, taking the skin off alive while, the, while they are alive and uh, skin them until they die. Oh. And that's how your babies died? They took a little patch about three by four off of her stomach, skinned her, and said, we'll skin you all the way if you oh. talk or cry. You learn not to cry real fast. I don't cry. For their part, mainstream Satanists strongly deny these gruesome allegations. Zena is the daughter of Anton LaVey, founder of the modern-day Church of Satan. That's a popular misconception, too, is that children are sacrificed at the altar, or that uh, animals are used for uh, sacrifices. And it's a horrible, horrible misconception. This is real hard for the police because they can never find proof, and that's because the bodies are sometimes consumed for communion, um, sometimes burnt, sometimes put in concrete. For proof, the women offered a few grisly photos. But as the Satanists are quick to point out, the images of death and decay are impossible to verify. These middle-class housewives that are worried that we want to abduct their children are barking at the wrong tree because we wouldn't want anything to do with their whole mediocre and corrupt lifestyle. Because the charges are so bizarre, most mental health professionals distance themselves from the entire area of Satanism. But here in Denver, Colorado, the Bethesda Psychiatric Institute has become the first in the country to devote an entire department to treating the victims of ritual crime. Uh, Can we believe these stories of sacrifice? I believe we need to believe them. Uh, they sound bizarre. They, they sound uh, beyond the capacity of human beings. Uh, but the stories we receive are tremendously consistent. Is this an epidemic? Uh, I believe uh, involvement in Satanism is increasing. Uh, I believe it is present in many communities around our country, and I believe it demands our attention. But somebody is apparently trying to discourage scrutiny. We've talked to therapists who treat ritual abuse victims, and they tell us of the threats they've received. I have direct knowledge of both death threats on a therapist and an attempt to end that therapist's life, which was unsuccessful. Here in Chicago, a group of well-known therapists from all over the country had the courage to share horror stories of threats and intimidation. Therapists have been directly threatened in ways that are quite alarming to them. A patient indicated to me that she wished to sacrifice the child with which she was pregnant. Naturally, I wasn't too enthusiastic about this, uh, shortly after this uh, occurred, I start, started to get telephone death threats. One of the things that I would add is that we are now hearing these reports from literally hundreds of therapists in every part of the United States. Someone out there is telling us to back off. Still the greatest toll seems to be on the women who say that they have bred babies. Babies that were sacrificed for Satan. I will probably have nightmares tonight about it as I have about my Joey that I have been talking about. I wake up screaming for him now in the middle of the night. I dream that he's lost and I'm trying to find him. Sickening, so incredibly outrageous, so incredibly unbelievable. But Zena LaVey, are these women lying? You have to understand that everything, every single thing you've um, given as examples of Satanism here are completely from a Christian standpoint. That everything you've um, put forth as being considered satanic is not considered satanic by my standard or my are definition these women of Satanism. Lying. Well, have the bodies been found? Where are they? Cheryl Horton, who joins us via satellite from Los Angeles. Cheryl Horton. Zena LaVey. Uh
Satanist who A points out that this is not in keeping with Awful. her teaching, but B says, where is the proof? Where is the proof? Why is there no proof if what you're saying is true? Hi, Geraldo. There's no proof for, for a fact of one thing. They burn the bodies. They either do that, they'll chop them up and dump them in the ocean, or they'll pour them in concrete, or they take and they use them for communion and eat them and then make bones out of the tools. But Cheryl, listen. These the people stories, are doing let me, let me interrupt you. Cheryl, okay. please, let me interrupt you. The stories dump in the ocean, chop up the bodies, these things, they sound like they can't be happening. Ted Gunnerson respected law enforcement professional recently or retired now from the FBI, former regional director of Los Angeles. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true? I absolutely believe it, without any doubt. Based on the information that's been given to me across the country by numerous survivors and by confidential sources and informants. Then why don't you name these people and arrest them? Never a name never an arrest. These women come out of a group and they insist that they know the people in the group and yet they do not identify these large mysterious cults. Name them and arrest them and get them off the street. Does he not make a valid point? He makes a valid point. The problem with that is, number one, police officers don't believe it. I may believe it. You may believe it. Some people in your audience may believe it. They don't believe it. Number two, if you decide to investigate these people, you have to, number one, handle it from an undercover operation. If you put an undercover operation into effect, then you have, in a, in, in a sense, your own police officers become involved in these heinous crimes, and they are, of course, become murderers. And in addition to that, if you do, do decide to investigate these people, it's a, it's a lot of work. And many law enforcement officers are apathetic and uh, don't want to get involved. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard this. The debate here could rage over this issue alone for hours and hours and hours. Michael Aquino is right when he says there have not been any successful prosecutions for this horrible allegation. Ted Gunnerson is a, a sincere man with a good reputation who says that there are difficulties in the prosecution. Still, the point is it has never been proven in a court of law. Obviously, it needs more investigation, but if these things are happening, then there should be a national task force of federal and state and local cops working together to prove or disprove. Because this is just unacceptable, this impasse. Coming up, we're going to have warning signs you should watch for, parents. And all of our guests will be available for a final discussion about Satanism after this break. Father LeBar, from the point of view of the Catholic Church, is this something Catholic parents, and I'm not singling out the Roman Catholic faith, obviously this affects children of all races, colors, creeds, religions. Uh, it seems uh, particularly strong, as you've seen over the course of the last two hours, to be uh, very strong in the so-called Bible Belt among fundamentalist Christians. But from the point of view of the Roman Catholic Church, is this something for parents to be concerned about? Something very much for parents to be concerned about because in, in our Catholic theology, we, re, we know the power of the devil. We know the influence that the devil can have directly and indirectly. And whether you want to deny it as the Church of Satan people want to do or call it by another name, it doesn't matter. It's the power of evil, the force of evil, and it's that thing which disrupts ordinary human life, which as we've seen happening so often. So it is necessary for parents to beware. And be Dr. Careful. Aquino, is it the force of evil? Does it disrupt? Is it a force for everything negative? Well, if you're talking about Satanism as legitimate Satanists define it, absolutely not. It is ethical, it is above ground, it is positive. If you are talking about the devil as it is defined by religions such as Father Labar's, then it is, in fact, a symbol of degenerate behavior, and this is part of our problem. Tonight. Should we have we warnings, sir, the way we do on cigarette packs for people coming into your houses of worship? Warning. This sect may be dangerous to your health and the health of the people you know. No, because in the case of the Temple of Set and the Church of Satan, we have not had any problems with criminal behavior. Among and yet things, when you hear story after story after story of people committing these wretched crimes, these violent crimes in the devil's name, you find one common thread to that. 
that all these people that you've shown tonight come from a background in which their moral instruction has been from a religious tradition other than ours. It may be Father Labar's, it may be some other mainstream one, but it is not that of Satanism. Sean Sellers condemned to die by lethal injection because of the murder of your mother, your stepfather, and a convenience store clerk. You've heard the Satanist say that it is not the teaching that is wrong, it is the person that's wrong. Are you using Satanism as a cover for your violence? No, I'm not. I've heard quite a few, well, I can call them as lies on the show right now. I've heard uh, Dr. Aquino say that uh, Satanism is not, or the ideals that we're talking about here are not Satanism. That is because Satanists believe that good is evil and evil is good. And so, of course, they're not the ideals that he believes in. He believes that evil is good. That is what I believed in. I heard him say that the uh, um, Satanic Bible is not to be taken literally. But I talked to a 16-year-old boy yesterday who takes the Satanic Bible literally. I've been working with a lot of ministries around the United States trying to get and help people get out of the occult. He takes the Satanic Bible literally. I took it literally. A lot of people are taking the Satanic Bible literally. And um, I heard um, Anton LaVey's daughter say that uh, these um, babies who are being sacrificed, you know, they're it's not Satanism. Or she wouldn't answer to saying that it was. The fact of the matter is that kids are abducted, teenagers are drawn into the occult, and a lot of them are being used for uh, occult um, sacrifices. And there's been so much on the show that you've, so, you've shown so much pain and blood and all this other gore and stuff, but you really haven't shown how to get out of the occult for those who want to get out. There is, um, let me tell you a story about a friend of mine. She tell it was, briefly, she, Sean, go ahead. Uh, just give me one half minute. Go ahead. Her name is... Um, yeah, well, anyway, she works with the uh, Watch Network in uh, Texas, and she told me that a lady called her and said, my daughter's involved in Satanism, and I want her to get out, but I don't want her to become some kind of Jesus freak or anything like that. Sue so told her, I'm sorry, I can't help you. A month later, the girl was uh, living with her aunt and uncle because her mother was in an insane asylum, and she was threatening to kill her aunt and uncle. What's your point, Sean? She destroyed three lives, her mother's, herself, and her aunt and uncle's, because she didn't want her... Her mother didn't want her to become a Jesus freak. I want to tell you right now, there is no other way out of Satanism except through Jesus Christ. Do you believe That's in it. the devil to this day? I believe in the devil, but I don't worship the devil. I'm a Christian. I stand up boldly and proudly and proclaim my faith in Jesus. Susan I'm telling you, there is no way out of Satanism except through Christ. Did, do, you, do you feel a sense of frustration that people don't believe you when you talk about what happened to your daughter? Yes, I do. Uh, the problem... With this whole, the problem with this whole issue is that the, because the crimes are so heinous, that people don't want to believe that an adult would do this to a, a child. And I don't know about the Church of Satan or the Temple of Set. I can't say that they had anything to do with what happened to my child. But if you look at a child's behavior, a child who's been ritually abused, there is no way that you can say that these things that they're talking about didn't happen to them. From the nightmares, to the running around the room when they disclose, to the latching on, to the crying and saying, Mommy, 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 don't go out, because if you go out, they're going to kill you. Threats, intimidation, fear. That's how this happened to my child and children all across the country. And it may have nothing to do with Dr. Aquino or Miss LeVay. All I know is what's happening to kids all over the country. They're being ritually abused. I don't know who's behind it, but it's happening. And parents have to be aware that children are not lying. Police officers have to listen to children. Listen to what they're saying and look at their behavior. Because a child cannot talk like you and I, who's been ritually abused. We'll be right back. All of us know that life is not safe. Every day we face the possibility of crime and disease and accidents and disasters. So here comes Satanism, which most of us would like to write off as harmless antics by some lunatic fringe. A few years ago, maybe, but not now. We have seen that Satanism can be linked to dope and to pornography, child abuse, and to murder. It has led seemingly normal teenagers into monstrous behavior. They preach mysticism. 
Other people, however, practice evil. And that is why we brought you this report tonight. I'd like to thank all of our guests, especially those we did not have a chance to get to. I'm Geraldo Rivera, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. I wish I...